Hey, what's going on everybody? So what I got here today, I just finished making the video for making this. This is a Wi-Fi to DMX converter and I'll post it down below. This is an LED moving head that I purchased off Amazon um, for my Christmas light display, uh, but it's only this particular one is DMX controlled. So it's got the big uh, XLR plugs on the back. Um, I don't have a DMX console and I wanted to be able to control this wirelessly um, but I also didn't want to deal with XLR cables um, so my thought is to make a very small and compact um, E131 DMX controller so this is using a Wemos Mini a RS45 conversion board and a shield um, and so this takes DMX signal from a DMX console or software like X Lights or DMX Pro <clears throat> sends it over your Wi-Fi network to a, essentially a DMX receiver like uh, this moving head here or LED pod lights, um, laser splitters, fog machines, you know, whatever you want that's DMX controlled. Um, so let me get this opened up and I'll show you how it's going to go in here. So on this unit, I've already had it opened up, kind of scoped out where everything's going to go. I'm going to remove this XLR plug. It's on a back plane, kind of a daughter board type setup, um, and it has a three pin connector that connects over here to the control board. And then on this particular unit, and it may be different on others, I don't know how well, let's see if I can get this to zoom in so we can see it. So on my particular one, I have an unused plug right here, a little two pin connector. Um, and I took my multimeter, and this is putting out 12 volt DC. So the Wemos can only run off five volts. So in this little stack I built in a, a buck boost converter, that's this little board that's soldered on the bottom side of uh, this Wemo shield, Wemos Mini Shield. And this will take the, the 12 volts from here and drop it down to 5 volts, which is what the Wemos uses and the RS45 chip uses. Um, so I took breadboard jumpers, uh, the male to female, and solder the mail in to the input side uh, of that buck boost converter on the stack up. And on the other side, I have the female pins that are going to plug into this little connector on this board. So I don't need to permanently modify this DMX moving head. Uh, my goal is to make a drop in replacement that should work for most uh, DMX moving heads or DMX devices in general, provided you have enough room in the case to fit something as small as this. Um, and judging by the way this one looks and a couple of the other DMX lights that I've taken apart, um, most of them use the same setup to where the male and female LXR or X, XLR plugs are um, soldered kind of on a back plane and then have a, a ribbon cable that attaches them to the control board. Um, so I'd imagine most of your DMX devices, you should have enough room to fit uh, something like this in to get it converted over to Wi-Fi. So I'll go ahead and get this pulled out. Then I'm going to feed my power wires, my negative and positive, through the unit over to the other side to get it to that uh, two pin connector. Okay, it took me a little bit longer than I thought it would to get the wires fed uh, up underneath this housing, but I have my power wires fed up underneath the housing of this bracket um, that holds the bearing and uh, the slip ring and the motor. Um, so the power wire is fed underneath over to the other side and hooked into the 12 volt power source, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, I've covered the bottom lining all through back here with capped on tape to provide me a non-conductive surface to mount the Wemos to. I took out the XLR plug in the back and I just put a piece of masking tape um, on the inside 
So what I'm going to do for these holes to get them sealed up, I put this piece of masking tape on the inside, and then I can either use epoxy or uh, hot glue and push the hot glue or epoxy into the recess of these holes. Once it cures, I can pull the tape away from the backside or leave it there, and that seals up these holes nicely, but not permanently to the point where if I wanted to revert this back to uh, kind of the way it came new with the XLR plugs in there, I can just uh, open it up, take my Wemos out, punch out these holes, mount my, D my uh, XLR plug back in there, and then it's returned back to normal. Same thing with the little three pin connector here that uh, plugged into the bottom of the XLR. So this is what it looks like on the back side. You got your male and your female XLR on the front. On the back, it just connects these two together. Um, so that's passed through for input and output. And then it has a little three pin connector here. In my particular light, I have a red wire, a white wire, and a black wire. The black wire is the shielding that will come off the shielding pin on the XLR. The red pin is data positive, which is gonna be pin three, or it's gonna be this pin right here. Need it to focus. So it's gonna be this pin right here is pin three. And if you look down in here, most of these plugs will be numbered. So you can see it on this plug. We have uh, one, two, and three. So the data positive is gonna be coming out of, or come into pin three which is the red wire. Uh, pin one is my data negative, which is gonna be my white wire. And then two is, would be my ground, um, but I'm not gonna use a ground for this because this RS-485 board is isolated. Um, and because it's in close proximity um, and it doesn't have a whole lot of interference, the way I routed the power and comm wires are away from the high volt switching side, which is on the opposite end of this control box for this moving head. I'm not really concerned about interference, uh, but this RS-45 board is pretty good about shunning out any external interference, um, especially in really short runs like this. You know, I have less than six inches of cable, um, and it wasn't picking up any interference in this three-pin connector running up underneath a motor housing with the XLR plug, so it's not going to pick up any additional interference going this route. Um, so I have my Wemos flashed over with the ES Pixel Stick firmware. I produced another video that I'll link in below that shows in more detail how to get this uh, loaded with the ES Pixel 6 firmware and with uh, the GitHub repository on where to get the firmware package produced or made by uh, Shelly, Shelby Merrick. This is using the serial interface on the ES Pixel Stick firmware. Um, so when you go to load the firmware, it'll give you two options. It'll either say pixel or serial. I selected serial for this. Um, and then once I get this installed in here and get everything buttoned up, we'll go over setting up um, or the couple changes that you need to make in uh, the ES Pixel Stick firmware web interface. So let me get all this uh, set up. I'm going to get this glued down. I'll get these holes filled in. And then I'll get, look on the other side here. This is the power connector. So on mine, the outside pin is positive. The inside pin is negative. So I have my white wire, which is my positive wire, going to the voltage regulator, going to the positive pin, and ground going to common ground on my Wemos. Um, I just use breadboard jumpers to get them into this little plug um, because I didn't want to solder directly on this board. Again, I don't want to modify this thing permanently. I want to be able to revert it back if I need to. So I'm just going to put a dab of hot glue on top of this connector to keep these put in here. Um, so let me get all this stuff glued up, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I got the back glued up, and you can see how that sealed it up pretty nicely. Um, and again, this is temporary, so if I wanted to remove this in the future, I just pop it out from the backside and then put my XLR plugs back in there. Um, so for the mounting the Wemos, I put capped on tape at the bottom, and then I put a layer of hot glue. I let that cool and solidify, and then I mounted or hot glued the Wemos stack. Um, on top of that as well as to the back uh, back side of the case and so that's mounted in there fairly rigid um, and then I put a dab of hot glue on the connector over here so this keeps my power uh, power plug in there so let me get the camera changed around and I'll get this powered up get my laptop pulled over here 
and I'll show you how to configure uh, the web interface for the ES Pixel Stick firmware. Okay, got my laptop set up. We'll get the moving head plugged in. So these, when you plug them in, they'll run a little test sequence. They have little homing switches on each of each of the two axes, the X and the Y, um, so that it can reference itself on power up, and it knows where it's supposed to be. So over here on the computer side, <clears throat> this is in the ES Pixel Stick uh, web interface. Really, the only things you need to change beyond the wireless setup stuff. Um, for my setup, I have everything set up as unicast. So all my Wi-Fi devices are set to uh, static IP. If you're running multicast, they'll be set to DHCP or dynamic addressing. Um, so the only tab that we're going to worry about in terms of this moving head is the device setup tab. And the only thing we're going to change, um, well, on my, on my setup, I have all my universes set to 510 on the universe boundary. And then the channel count. This is going to be how many channels your moving head is. Uh, this particular one can be configured for a 9 channel or 11 channel. The 9 channel fits everything that I want to do and I don't need the added um, flexibility that the 11 channel offers. So for my particular setup I'm going to set this to a 9 channel and then you're just going to scroll down and hit save changes. So I really I'll post it below. Uh, it's called DAE131 test source. So this is a DMX or E131 tester. And what it allows you to do is put in the IP address of your target device, select whether you're running unicast or multicast. Here you put your start and end channels. For mine, because my device is a nine channel, I have a one to nine. Um, and then I can go over here to the fader tab and it gives me all of my DMX channels. So now, let me get this zoomed out. When I move up the slider for channel one, which for me is my rotational axis, camera rotates around. If I move two, it moves in that direction. And then uh, all the rest of these that control uh, different lights. This particular one is an eight gobo uh, moving head. So it can toggle through eight different uh, display patterns. flipped around here. You can see it's just toggling through all the gobos and then it has uh, several colors. This particular one has strobes, uh, has a built-in dimmer, and then it's an eight color so I can adjust the color of it. I can remember what channel it is. Anyways, you can consult the manual on your particular uh, moving head or DMX application to see what each of the channels do in terms of uh, whether it moves it or changes color, whatever it does. So that's it for this video. I'm going to get this buttoned up and get this thing mounted outside. Um, I just wanted to throw this quick video together for people who didn't know it was possible or um, they do sell a commercially available DMX over Wi-Fi setup. Uh, but those, the cheapest I could find is about $100, and you get one transmitter and one receiver. Um, so the transmitter would plug into the computer or your DMX console. The receiver would plug into the male XLR plug on your DMX application, and it allows you to control it wirelessly. Um, you're fairly limited on those in terms of range. Um, I don't know exactly what protocol they use, but I think most of them offer about 100 feet. Um, in optimal condition and so you can only control this thing line of sight. This way, the way that I'm doing it is controlled over Wi-Fi. So if I'm running this on a 2.4 gigahertz network I have around three or four hundred feet um, through walls and inside or outside. Uh, it gives me a little more flexibility running over Wi-Fi. In addition, this whole setup it probably cost me maybe fifteen dollars in material and parts um, and about an hour and a half to get this thing built. So uh, for an $80 moving head, 15 bucks in uh, equipment to get this thing converted over to Wi-Fi, and about an hour and a half of your time, and you can have a, a Wi-Fi DMX moving head. So that's it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments, please post them below, and I will try and get them answered as best I can. 
If you haven't yet, please subscribe. I put out videos, um, or try to put out a new video every week, and I'm starting to cover a lot of the custom application for uh, DMX and E131 um, devices, using them in ways that either aren't documented very well um, or aren't documented at all, and some people may just be unaware of the things that you can do with them. So that's it for this video. We'll see you next time.